Duke Nukem Forever is famously known as one of the worst video games ever made. However, I enjoy it. Duke Nukem is a series that started as two 2D side-scrollers that came out in 1991 and 1993 for MS-DOS. The original Duke Nukem is about the evil Dr. Proton building an army of robots to take over the world. The US government hires Duke to stop Proton and save the world. At this time, Duke was only a blonde haired macho man type with sunglasses and a gun. But Duke Nukem 2 established the personality most loved this franchise for. The gameplay is still mainly the same as the first, but has a new story. It starts with Duke on the Oprah show talking about his new book titled Why I'm So Great. Duke is then kidnapped by aliens so that they can use his brain to plot their next attack. Duke escapes and fights the aliens, stopping their invasion. He gets in a spaceship and flies home. The series hopped into the FPS genre with its next entry, Duke Nukem 3D, for MS-DOS, Windows, Mac OS, PS1, Sega Saturn, and Nintendo 64. Writing off the coattails of Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Doom 2, it hit shelves in 1996, only a few months before id Software's Quake. Duke Nukem 3D was a revolutionary game for the time due to how much Duke talks. Until now, all FPS protagonists said nothing but Duke wouldn't shut up. He was almost as bad as Gex. Duke 3D's plot is quite comedic. It starts directly after Duke Nukem 2, with him flying home after his victory on the alien planet. But his ship gets shot down and we get one of the most famous lines in video game history. Dang, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. It turns out that the aliens kidnapped all the women on Earth, and that makes Duke angrier than you can imagine. Duke fights the aliens through the streets of LA and eventually goes to space to save the captured Earth women. This ends with a showdown with the Cycloid Emperor in a football stadium that finishes with Duke kicking off the Emperor's head and using it, the neck as a toilet. There have also been several spin-off titles, such as Time to Kill, Land with the Babes, Zero Hour, and The Manhattan Project. In 1997, the series developer 3D Realms announced the sequel, titled Duke Nukem Forever, parodying Batman Forever. The game was delayed various times with multiple engine switches. In 2001, 3D Realms had a trailer for that year's E3, which made it seem like they were far along.
going to be released that year, but was delayed again and again and again. The franchise was purchased by Gearbox Software and Take-Two Interactive, who eventually got the game out in 2011 for PS3, Xbox 360, and PC, nearly 15 years after its original announcement. It was hit with skewed reviews and horrible response from fans. The game starts in Las Vegas at Duke's new casino called The Lady Killer, which gets attacked in a new invasion by the aliens. After fighting his way through the Duke cave, he fights with the cycloid mothership. Duke learns that the aliens were going to use the Hoover Dam to teleport more aliens to Earth. Before heading to the dam, Duke goes to the Duke Dome to kill the alien queen. I can't show this level or the boss fight, and if you have played the game, you understand why. After killing the queen, he blacks out and shows up in a Duke burger. After fighting through the burger joint, he drives his monster truck to the Hoover Dam. Duke is told by the EDF, Earth Defense Force, that the Cycloid Emperor was reborn and is working with the US President to take over the world. The President is betrayed by the Emperor and Duke kills the remaining aliens and the Emperor. After saving humanity once again, Duke announces his plan to run for President, and then it's over. After the release of DNF, it was hated universally by every fan of the franchise, but the few of us that like it assume that it's just because the original fans got older and grew out of the franchise's humor while waiting. In May of this year, the original 2001 build of the game was leaked online for all to play. This version of the game honestly looks amazing for the time it was supposed to come out. This version is only three years after Half-Life and two years before Postal 2 came out. It is a shame they didn't finish this version, but a few people online are trying to restore it to be a fully playable game. This would have had a ton of weapons and new and old enemies in it. This also has a P button similar to what is in Postal 2. Some believe this was leaked intentionally to build hype for a new game, but signs are pointing to that being false due to some things found in the files of the game. I recommend checking this out for yourself and watching something that goes more in depth with the history of this game. In my opinion, Duke needs to come back in a major way with a new game. Show Duke becoming president and maybe add in Bombshell who is going to be in the original version of DNF. There's also a movie in the works starring John Cena which could help reignite the series. John St. John, the voice actor for Duke, has said in interviews that Gearbox wants a new game but only wants it if it is guaranteed to be great. In the end, I understand some of the hate, but it is not as bad as many say. I recommend you play it if you're a fan of FPS games and edgy slash raunchy humor. <laughs>